welcome back everyone. Today's video is going to be a dual perspective on the flanged mace versus the longsword, like we do. I haven't put one of these out in a little while. I haven't put out anything in a little while. Caught a cold, I think. Kind of sounding pretty sick here, so we're persevering. We'll get back on the horse here, though. Let's take a look at the flang mace. We'll probably go through all the other weapons. Probably the morning star next, since we did them at the same time as this one, but uh, we'll go through all the weapons. I think the two perspectives is actually really beneficial. It helps. It it really helps seeing how your weapon lines up in different positions against the people attacking you. So we'll go over the first attack, second attack, third attack, jump attacks, dragging, and crouch attacks. I noticed something with the dragging that seemed to, I thought was going to be <clears throat> more impactful. But what it really turns out to be, I think, is just the fact that the flying mace doesn't seem to have a physical hitbox from about halfway down. You know, the, the physical hitbox on the weapon seems to be about the upper third, actually. Which is kind of wonky. It lends to taking damage when you're too close to the flying mace, right? Which, man, I've done a lot. I've been like, oh, I'll just push into him and catch the lower half of the half of the, of the weapon. No, don't do that. Bad. Dishonor. <laughs> Be a good longsword, bro, and properly space. All right, you need to make sure that you're aiming high enough to catch the upper one-third. Or you need to be spaced far enough back so that when it's reaching forward, you're catching that upper one-third. All right. Which was a little surprising, but it's no worries. It is what it is. I thought it was desync at first. It's not desync at all. It's just no physicalized hitbox on the lower half of the weapon, which is just fine. You can see the first hit there, which was very consistent, super easy. Jump attacks, you can aim very high up. You can react to them pretty well now with desync changes that they added or the fix they added in Hotfix 31. You can, on the attacker side, manipulate it pretty well because of how long the lingering hitbox is. So in an actual combat scenario, don't be surprised if a gamer is going to reach around that longsword, but... You can aim just straight up very easily above their head while they're jumping, and you can react to it as well, which is nice. The second attack, insanely consistent, as you know. The way the weapons line up, it's just, it's, it's way, it's not way too, it's just how it is. It's incredibly favorable to the longsword. If you can bait out the first attack and walk into parry range to try and get the second one, it's your best bet in... 99 out of 100 scenarios all right focus on that focus on taking and parrying that second attack if you need to if you're struggling with anything the second attack jump attacks just as consistent as the first one you can react to it very well still it lines up incredibly well still just like you just like it was before so definitely still beneficial to try and take that attack even in jumping attacks the third attack is where i thought there was issues maybe with dragging or desync I think what it really amounts to is the fact that the way the longsword points at an angle in your uh, parry position, it just tends to look like you're going to be able to parry it, but it goes under that half mark of the flaying mace and doesn't register, right? It doesn't register the physical part of the flaying mace. But <clears throat> then you see parts like this right there. That's your, that's your parry. That's your upper one-third. I think that one went under technically, but... It's 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 pretty consistent if you have the right spacing. But you can see how, especially with this third attack, how prone it is to going right through. Up in the left there on the right side image, you can see it. That's about halfway up. Goes right through. That's why I think it's about the upper one-third or so of the weapon. But if you space, you're good. Spacing Spacing's key. Space, per usual, <laughs> with the long sword, spacing's key. The uh, third attack, if you're the cleric bros out there, the third attack is your play. If you're worried about getting parried, aim low, go crouch attacks, drag around right to left with your two attacks, try and catch arms, and then when you get to your third attack on the chain, hit him with a jump attack, barrel stuff him, you'll win the trade. You have a faster recovery, so you'll be able to deal damage, get back into a blocking position to try and block the thrust from the longsword bro if they start trading. If they're a parry gremlin anyways, you're just going to outskill them with drags, okay? But your third attack is your best chance of getting through Longsword from Flying Mace. And for Longsword Bros, it's your biggest weakness is trying to parry that third attack. So if you miss the first two and you see the third coming out, maybe trade. Maybe trade a poke. Maybe trade a little DPS trade and go from there. 
We did some more testing of the first jump attack, just in case. I was trying to find a static spot to parry at every level of attack. There isn't one. Like there is with Repulsion, you can aim off the belt on the left to cover your head to about your, your thighs on the character model, depending on how close they are. But just couldn't find one. So here we were testing drags, dragging, first attack, still consistent for parrying, aiming in a certain spot. Reacting to it as well. Hotfix thirty one was seriously. I I cannot praise Iron Mace enough. I don't I don't really care about any of their balance changes or lack thereof during this preseason pre wipe, because god damn did they fix this game in many ways by bringing in this either desync or interpolation, whatever the hell it's called. It was an amazing fix. So they still get another pass for a couple more patches from me. But you can see here the third attack, the value of it with jump attacks. It works pretty well. We got it around it very often. And it's 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 your best chance. It's your best chance. Clerics, you need body stuff. Just body stuff. Hit them with the jump attacks with your third attack more than anything else. The crouch attacks, you can see here, pretty wonky, you would think. But because of the vertical nature of the mace you end up catching the longsword in a lot of different places off your screen and you have no idea that it's happening. Crouch attacks, not very good unless you're dragging as well. Like you can see how the leg is over there to the right side of the, uh, of the cleric's perspective on the right of the screen. If you can push in stuff to the right, aim off screen and drag, that's your best bet. With the mace against longsword, it's very in the longsword's favor, not gonna lie. Mace players, you need to be dragging. You need to be dragging right to left, not left to right either. Drag right to left, and it'll be a lot. You'll you'll find a lot more success fighting the longsword bros by doing that. Okay, that's about all I got. We'll get into uh, some of the some more of the weapons here. I haven't been playing very much since the since the leaderboard ended. The duo grind was fun. We had a lot of fun fights in duos, so I'm glad they're gonna probably hopefully keep it around. But uh, we'll see. We'll do the morning star next probably. Give me some uh, comments or some uh, requests down in the comments about which weapons to do next. I know I want to do quarterstaff as well, but I'll catch you guys next time. Good luck in the dungeon. Have fun in crypts. Stay safe and take care.